Welcome back to Let's Play Higarashi Simi Horoboshi A month was almost past The recording didn't work After redo it and ramble Once again over what I have to say Fucking Camtasia So like I don't wanna like Ramble about it for too long you know I feel like I've done that a lot, really. It's like, I took a break, like I said in the previous part. I would likely take a break because my anxiety and all that. Well, it escalated to the point of a mental breakdown. So, it was building when I recorded last time. It was, it was nearly at its peak. It's like, I don't know how, if my anxiety came across in the previous part much, but... It just like it kind of overwhelmed me and then it overwhelmed me big time and I had a mental breakdown anxiety depression all kinds of emotions I felt like a renner at the end of the day to be honest just like paranoia anxieties delusions and in terms of the freaking like where we left off it's like oh red is taking the classroom hostage it's like no, no nothing like that can relate to well I can in a way I felt like a prisoner of my own fucking mind it was horrible when I mentally broke down between the point where I mentally broke down and eventually recovered it was maybe like a week or two like the recovery from it was like felt like the longest like in a sense of normality back it's like the breakdown itself it was like maybe four or five days or something like that and it, while I was like in that kind of situation, I'd like every day I just start breaking down and start just crying, which is unusual for me because that just doesn't happen really, you know? So I was fucking a mental wreck, essentially. It was unpleasant. It's like, I feel bad, like every time I mention it, but the causes was like generosity of a subscriber. Which also brought the depression into it, just like, because it felt bad, you know, about the fact that I was overreacting to, like, the generosity and all that. So, I guess one thing to learn from this is if any of you viewers offer me anything, I would have to politely decline. The only thing I ask is, like, you know, understanding and, uh, you know, just like, just, just enjoy the videos, essentially. Just like, don't ask for it. I don't really ask for anything from you viewers other than that. It's like, I don't even tell you, just like, oh, like, subscribe, and comment or anything like that. I'm just like, no, if you enjoy a video, good. If you don't, yeah, whatever. And the second thing that further escalated all this was my laptop needed to be fixed. So, you know, I just, this is like, for more information on all that has happened, my main channel, Blue Skull Dragon 87, update, uploaded a video called A Long Update, which I go over like 30 odd minutes in that, dedicated to talking about what happened and the long recovery process. It was only like a few weeks, but it felt like three months had passed overall. And now like that I've more or less feel like I've recovered from it and getting back to normal here. It feels like September flew by, but it didn't because it was just like when I was in that state it freaking dragged. It dragged on. So yeah. It wasn't a pleasant experience. But anyways it's like, I'm also been like recording for the October LPs on my main channel, which I do every year, but it's much later in the month than, like, I'd record like in late August usually, not freaking mid to late September, you know, for those, because I kind of stress myself over that, I feel like added to my stress and anxieties, you know, to get all that done, because I got three LPs I was doing. Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, Corpse Party, and uh, Resident Evil 2 PS1 version. 
It's like the generosity of the subscriber I mentioned sent the capture card, and it's much better than mine. And I, I actually used it for the Resident Evil 2 LP because my capture card can't record it with shit. And I was like, no, I will put that capture card to use right now. And so I did. It's a pain in the ass to set it up, but the quality is much better. So, it's like six parts of that LP, six parts of the Corpse Body one, it's the PC version. And the free version of Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, I've pretty much completed it, except for the after LP talk and a bonus spot or two. So, it says like, at least I got one of those done, but it's just like, I would have like preferred if I'd like, by the time, this time, I'd like usually prefer if I've already got the LP's nearly completed, but it's not even close. So it stressed me out, you know? But still, I feel like, just like, despite this, you know, this LP coming back right here, I don't know when I'll upload for it. I wanna kind of upload for it before October rolls around, cause once October rolls around, this will go on hold regardless. So I shouldn't really be rambling for six odd minutes in that case. It's so, like, let's see, uh, it's just like, I wouldn't have been able to complete this in the previous part, clearly. My anxiety would not have been able to cope with recording a whole, the rest of this arc and editing it, essentially. So let's do this shit, it's been forever. Officer, oh, today around 1pm, the enemy's our branch school's classroom is taken over. All 25 students have been taken hostage. The suspect's uh, initial demands were to prohibit all entry to the branch school's property and secure a hotline to us. So they're willing to negotiate with us from um, the start. What's going on? Also, the suspect is asking for you, Ishisan. It's Reina Ryugu. Ryugu-san. Very well. We seem to be inseparable, huh? And the cat looks like he wants out of the room. Well, I'll be dealing with her until the end. They should give a crooked smile. You don't know if she has any accomplices. The curtains are closed, so we can't confirm the situation. Have you asked whoever told us about this? No, oh, Reina Ryugu declared it herself. Therefore, we don't know what's going on inside. The teacher received a call from Reina Ryugu, and she left the classroom before the incident took place. This has been well planned, huh? Has anyone from the forestry service been taken hostage? I shall let the cat out of the room. A moment. Right, where were we? Nobody from the service was there today. All 25 hostages are students. That number matches with the attendance the teacher took this morning. Lost a suspect, right? Have you seen anyone else suspicious other than Raider Ryugu? No, we've seen someone peeking out from behind the curtain, but it was the suspect herself. We're guessing there must be at least one or two more of them, though. Well, maybe she really is doing it by herself. Reno Ryugu was a true believer in Mio Takano's scrapbooks. According to those scrapbooks, the entire village was Reno Ryugu's enemy. She didn't have anyone she can trust. Whoever wished she has also believed in Mio Takano's delusion. It was possible that someone who was influenced in the same way was following Reno Ryugu. Which son, the principal and the teacher are here. Hello, Chiei Sensei. Are you okay? Which she ran up to Chiei Sensei, who was crying with a handkerchief held up to her face. Reno Chad is a good girl. For her to do something like this, there must be some mistake. Oh! God, I feel like I'm playing corpse body again. It's like the voice, there's voice acting in the PC version, but it's bloody inconsistent. It's like, sometimes it's then, sometimes it ain't. It's just like, I complain about that every, and probably every part of that LP. Along with, like, Blood Drive, one of their, their more recent sequels to that game. And how much I dislike the direction the series went in. But anyways, if I were to do this by the book, I would ask you about ryugu recent behavior. But when it comes to ryugu I probably know better than you do. Please, don't worry. I'll take care of this as peacefully as possible. 
Okay, sensor was huddled over and I wish you didn't think you could say anything else to her. On the contrary, the principal is staying strong trying to figure out how to take care of the situation. Mr. Wishy, please, if possible, I would like to request to be a hostage myself. I will take the place of the children. Let me do that. Oh, wait, no, that's her. Let me do that instead. It's all my fault. Ah! Please don't blame yourselves. I have things I want to ask you, so I'd appreciate if you cooperated. Bunch of girls, please show them the blueprints. Excuse me, sir. Section Chief Tatsugi is on the radio. Oh, this is Oishi. Which is that? How goes things? Command Cocoon informed me of the situation. The suspect is under age. Please keep strict control of the press. I understand. Also, the suspect has requested me as a negotiator. Is that okay with you? You've known Reina Ryugu since the parasite incident from the other day. I bet she still thinks you're her ally. Only you can do the job. Good luck. Only you, Oishi, can prevent hostage situations from escalating. <laughs> I really don't want to, but since I caused so much trouble, I guess I'll have to do this to make up for it. Vijasan, Reina Ryugu on the car phone. On the car phone. That was faster than expected. I'll go get it. Thank you. Hello, oh, this is Oishi. Wichisan, this is Ryugu. Hello, oh, this is Oishi. It's a signal weak on your car phone. It's kind of hard to hear. I'm surprised I can do the Rena voice so easily now again. After all this time. <laughs> just like me, it's getting old. Just like, just like my laptop and my TV and my consoles. Just like me, it's getting old. <laughs> Oh, that, that mental breakdown made me way too aware of things. It makes you hyper aware, at least it did in my case. It's like made me realize just like how time is passing. And I just like, uh, it's just like I'm closer to 30 than I was at 20 now. It's like, I don't like it, man. I don't like it. I was watching uh, the new It with my mother the, a week or so ago. And like Google the actor who played Pennywise, you know, it's and he's only the guy's only a year older than me, and I was just like, God damn man. Just like Just time man, it's like fucking slow down, fucking hell. It's just like oh already was having a quarter life crisis a few years back now, it just feels even worse. Just like oh slow down time, why? Wishy and I exchange friendly words. A long, long cord trailed through the hallway from the teacher's office. That cord extended further to the phone on the podium in the classroom. Let's get down to business. I'll check to see if you're qualified to negotiate for me. Okay, shoot. You are my ally, aren't you, Wishy-san? Of course. Let's expose the conspiracy of the Slozak family together. You and me. Was she answered without hesitation? Was he still my ally? Or was this sly detective just saying what I wanted to hear? Either way, I only had a wish to depend on. If I couldn't trust him, I was stuck. There would be nothing else I could do. You didn't believe me for a while either, did you, Kitchkun? But you do now, right? Kitchkin was sitting on the floor facing away from me with his head resting in his hands. We're comrades now, huh? Yeah, that's right. Renner Ugu asked Kitchen my bar if he was like a comrade, but I couldn't hear his voice. Was she trying to tell me that Kitchen my bar was still alive or that he was being forced to obey her because of the hostages? My word, son is your ally too, huh? That's nice, but weren't you suspicious of my bar son for a while? Yep, when I heard about the BB gun incident, I couldn't believe it. But we can't let the past fool us. We have to learn from the past in order to grow. <laughs> That's very good. You're absolutely right about that. That was why we forgave each other. So I don't doubt Keichikun anymore. Keichikun is my comrade. 
I understand. Therefore, KG Kun is my ally too, isn't he? Please say hello to him for me. Forgot. It's been such a long time, but word of the day, isn't it? Forgot. Till just just now, essentially. You know what? Actually, I think I went over anxiety before, didn't I? In the, the word of the day, I think. Or was it not in here? I can't remember. Anxiety. Oh, just anxious, wasn't it? Shin Pai Shiteru. But we're here with different words. Uh, I wonder if it's in here. Mental illness. Say Shin Pyo. Pyo, actually. Say Shin Pyo. Pyo, not pure, pyo. Say Shin Pyo. I think that's mental illness. Just like, you know, just to fit with, you know, the fact that I'm re just. Recovered from a mental breakdown after all feels relevant. Heck, you know, just like I remember there were some points during that where I kept when I fought back to where we left off with the plot here, and it was just like, God damn it. Of all the times of freaking like stop recording, it had to be when freaking Rena goes off the deep ends. It's just like, freaking hell. Sure, I will. It's like I freaking felt like Renner, man. The paranoia, the delusions, the anxieties. It was just like, it was horrible experience. I felt like a prisoner of my own mind. It was just terrible. Actually, I'd like to say hello to him myself. Can he come to the phone? Conversation stopped suddenly. That made me nervous. Did I say something wrong? Sure, here he is. Kechikun, I wish your son wants to talk to you. I heard some rattling and rustling on the other side of the phone. But it's not like, you know, Kechi would be able to really say much to him. Because Rena's got her eyes on him. Her creepy eyes. Hello, this is Maibara. He sounded monotone. Unable to disobey, Kechi Maibara must have been pretend to follow Rena Riga's orders. Hello, my bar son. This is Oishi from the Hokumea Police Station. Thank you for coming to the phone. Let's do this together. Yes, let's do this together. What is Ryuga-san doing right now? She's walking around the classroom. My bar son, please say yes if your answer is yes, and yeah if your answer is no. Do you know what Ryuga-san wants? Wait, if it's yes and yeah... It's gotta be two different versions, isn't it? It's, it's, it's like... <coughs> Have a look at that. My bar son. Uh, wh what does that say again? Um... Uh, I can never remember freaking Katakana. I know that's you. Uh... Fuck it. So, hi for yes. And air fun yeah, I guess. I mean I guess that is two ways of saying yes, I guess. Yeah. I mean air. <laughs> that answer told me for sure. Kate my borrow wasn't Rena Ryugu's accomplice. There's no way Rena wouldn't tell her accomplice what she wanted. After playing the hostage situation like this. Did I read the previous line? I must have to say this if you have to say this. Do you know what Renneric is? And what Renneric is once? How would he help someone who wouldn't even tell him what she wanted? I'll ask you directly. Are you Renneric is ally? No, let me change my question. Are you being threatened by Renneric? Yes. There you go! The other guys in the car listening in on our conversation raised their fists in victory. Is Rene Ryugu the only suspect? Yes. 
If she was the only... So wait, no, he's not reading that, is he? If she was the only suspect, then we could respond appropriately. I guess nobody else believed in talking to scrapbooks. If so, my being fooled was even more embarrassing. Well, even Katie was fooled for a day. As I thought about my next question, I heard the phone being taken away from Gaethje. Renner came back on the line. See, Gaethje is my ally, isn't he? Yes, you were right. That's very promising. Okay, now it's your turn to talk, Oishi-san. How are the simultaneous raids on the Sonazaki family going? Remember, you promised me when we talked on the phone before. Have you found a secret research facility yet? I decide on what to say. Should I tell her we conducted raids or not? Maybe she already knew we didn't raid. Maybe she was just testing me. Trying to come up with a plan for this. Simultaneous raids as we speak. We're talking to the prefectural police as well as the public safety division. We're talking about the entire city. So we need a little more time to prepare for it. You're taking too long. Who's your son? Don't you realize what kind of emergency situation Shishibone City is in right now? What are you doing? Wishy san. You, do you believe me? Don't do. Don't you? Am I ally right? Right? Please answer me! Of course I am. But the police department is a little more complicated than you think. I'm doing my best, I really am. The thing is, this is on a really big scale. Wishy san. They poisoned me recently. With the parasites that killed Tomataki san. They poisoned me with them. I've been itching like crazy since yesterday. I'm all bloody from scratching at my throat. I might claw at my throat and die at any moment. And you're telling me you're still preparing. I knew it. If you didn't realize how dire the situation was. The font was red. Can you not tell how drastically different everything is from Randall's perspective? He understood there was some kind of conspiracy in Enemy's Hour. We didn't realize how soon that plan was going to be executed. Besides, I was already feeling itchy all over my body and was bound to soon die the same way as Tomataka-san. I'm sorry, I really am doing my best, but everybody asks me if I have proof. Proof? Do you need proof? Well, yeah. Mere sound scrapbooks. Maybe that was what I'd need to convince the police. I was afraid someone would destroy the evidence if I handed them over to Oishi-san, so I kept them with me. But I didn't have much longer to live. I might not even make it until tomorrow morning. That's right, I might be dead before tomorrow. I would die tonight. Okay, I'll give you Mia San scrapbooks. Please use them to convince the other policemen. Ah, that should help. Please do give me the scrapbooks. I looked through my backpack, which was lying by my feet. And yes, some scrapbooks were in there. You know what? I, I, it's just like I'm just picturing her just bugging them out the window. It's like, you're there now, go fetch them and don't come too close, though. So, last resort, though, we should stand. Do your best. No. You must take care of it, please. Of course. Trust me. I'll expose their conspiracy. I knew the police would take too long to get things moving. They're an organization, after all. That's why I'm doing this to make them understand. You have an excuse now. Please use this chance wisely. Uh, thank you. You can count on me. How should we do this? Do me to come get it? I knew she wouldn't let me into the classroom. She was still cautious. I could guess where Renarigo was going to take this thing, so I tried to stay ahead of her. I handed a memo with my instructions on it to a colleague. I can't really leave the classroom, so I'll leave Alf Cage to couldn't deliver them to you. Maybe that's better. If he left the building, something might happen. What do you mean? Well, I'm sure the Sonic like family already knows about what's going on here. I'm sure they didn't expect you to do something like this, so they might come to shut you up. To shut me up? Do you mean... By shooting you. A hitman from the Sonic like family may try to put a stop on to this by sniping you. That's why you shouldn't come outside. Don't even go near the windows. I saw you peeking out a window, but you shouldn't do that. They may fire at any time. W wait a minute. Aren't there police running around? Can you stop that from happening? We would if we could, but it's so open around here. 
A well-trained sniper can easily shoot as far as 400 meters. As you know, attack units from the Sonazaki family have gone through military training, and they specialize in assassination techniques. Don't underestimate them. I need you to help me expose the conspiracy of the Sonazaki family. I think Oish is doing a pretty good job here of convincing Rena that he's still on her side by saying shit like this. I understand. Thank you for your warning. Even if my life is turned tomorrow, I can't die now. That's right. Under no circumstance should <coughs> you pick out the windows, okay? Be very careful. The phone conversation ended. Rene Rigo was going to let Keisha my bar deliver the scrapbooks. Did you get what I wrote on the memo already? Yes, we've got it. Do you think it'll work? I scared her, so I don't think she'll pick out the windows. I'm sure she'll still have her eyes open, though. I'll work around it. I roughly understood what was going on from the phone conversation. Oh, she's got the creepy eyes still. Okay, Ketchkun, here are the scrapbooks. Their contents are very important. They're proof that Sonazaki family's conspiracy. Now police can use them as evidence to conduct a raid. Please take this to Ishisan, okay? And when you give it to him, come right back. I'm watching you. If you do something you aren't supposed to, I'll be angry. Rani took out a couple of old scrapbooks from her backpack and gave them to me. Then she cast a sidelong glance at me on. I'll tell you about these later, Mi-chan. I'll tell you all about what a scary conspiracy your family is planning. Or maybe you already know, huh? <laughs> anyway, go on, Ketchikun. Just go halfway out into the schoolyard. Don't say anything. You're just delivering the scrapbooks. Don't talk, okay? If you do, if it was Chia Sensei, she'd slap you with a ruler, but hmm, what should I use instead? All right, all right, I won't even say a word. Go on, put that hatchet down. I'm your ally, right? Trust me. Okay. Yeah, you're right, I trust you. So please don't betray me, okay? And his eyes would tell me clearly. They would tell me she didn't trust me. But even in this state, she also knew she couldn't distrust her friends. Therefore, though she couldn't trust me, she was pretending to. That was why she didn't time me up. Okay, I'll be going. I'll be right back. Okay. I walked past my friends who were lying down on the floor and headed to the exits. I saw some of their faces as I passed. Some were fearful, some were sure that I'd use the opportunity to run, and some were scared that they'd die if I did. Well, none of them were thinking, Oh, Kate, she's got a plan. Kate, she'll save us. Hey, Kate, she's... Like, always, like, in a t when he's in a tough situation, he always is able to make a comeback. Why won't they think maybe he could get him out of this situation, potentially? But I guess it's a lot more dire than just playing a freaking game, though, isn't it? No worry, guys. I won't let her even touch any of you. If Rana tries to do something, I'll stop her even if I have to risk my own life. Anyway, I'd do whatever it took to ensure that nobody died. I had to make sure Rena didn't get angry, I just wait for the right moment. I went down to the school entrance and changed my shoes, then unlocked the door and stepped outside. I felt the fresh air on my skin. I saw the lights from the police cars. I could feel all the policemen looking at me. As soon as I was in the schoolyard, a little voice tried to tempt me. I was free from Rena now. If I ran off the school grounds, I'd be free. What was I thinking? If I did something like that, Rena would go crazy and who knows what else she'd do. The important thing here wasn't my safety, it was to make sure that Rena didn't kill anyone. I saw a big man coming towards me from the school gates. That was probably Oishi Sam. Has, has he encountered Oishi in person in this arc? I can't remember. Are you okay to my son? Hello, I'm Oishi from Okinawa Station. You can call me Kurachan. Uh, sorry, Rena told me not to talk and just give these to you. So please, just take them in silence. I understand. These are the scrapbooks, huh? I'll take them. I tried to hand the scrapbooks to each son, but he stepped aside a little. Eh? Confused as to what he was doing, I changed my position and handed him, uh, handed him to him again. 
He took them that time. And at that point, we she put something that was under his jacket into my pocket. Don't worry. Even if Ryugasan was watching the building, it's behind you. She couldn't have seen that. And she wouldn't have heard that creepy oriental music either. Uh, what is this? I couldn't look into my pocket because I didn't want Renna to suspect anything. But whoever it was, it was pretty heavy for its size. I have a memo for you too. On your way back to the classroom, please read it without Ryugasan noticing. Go on now. She'll get suspicious. You know, we she's really is a sly guy, isn't he? It's like it's like he knew Keiichi wasn't allowed to speak, so he's like, you know just like sneakily put something in his pocket. It's a memo and probably something else as well. I just followed his directions. I was worried Rena had begun to suspect something. When I looked at the classroom, the curtains were closed. But that didn't mean she wasn't peeking out for a crack. I went back to the entrance and locked the door. If Renna checked and found his door unlocked, it could cause more trouble. Renna was in the classroom. There was no way she'd come down this way. She was alone. If she left the classroom, everyone would get up and run. They couldn't run because Renna was there, but they were all waiting for their chance. The entrance then was Renna's blind spot. As I changed my shoes, I quickly removed what Oishi San had put into my pocket. Yeah, there was a radio with an earpiece. Yeah, I was gonna say that's what he'd also put in the pocket, but you know, that would have spoiled what we'd learn just <laughs> moments later, you know? And something else that looked like a short police baton. There was also a folded piece of paper. I opened the piece of paper and saw a note written in small print. Dear my barracoon, please hide the bug in your pocket. It picks up even a low voice, so you can use it to get it in touch with me. By using the earphone, you can hear me in return. There's also a spray for self-protection. If sprays are as far as one meter, make sure you aim for the face. This must be the spray. I guess it's safe to try it here. I held down the button and gas sprayed out from the nozzle. Compared to Renner's hatchet, this required some caution, but it was small enough to fit inside of my hands. It was reassuring that I could hide it so easily. In other words, it was now possible for me to stop Renner. As I realized all my classmates' faces rested on my shoulders, I felt sweat form on my face. The memo continued. The spray is just for self-defense purposes. Pepper spray only impairs eyesight. While it makes your enemy powerless due to extreme pain and coughing for at least 30 minutes, it's not powerful enough to render them unconscious. Therefore, please don't forget there is a possibility that your enemy may fight back desperately in panic. Spray is your last resort. Please don't depend on it, but if you need to, make sure you to use it. Which Was he telling me to use it or not? It was probably one of those grown-up issues. Well, it's like you could potentially, like, get it around it without having to use it, but, you know, it's a last resort, like you said. If the cops entrusted me solely with the fate of the hostage and I failed, they'd be held liable. So while he gave me a weapon, he made me consider its use. I hid the bug and the spray in my pockets and went back to the classroom. I felt a little dizzy, maybe because I was nervous. I was simply following Renner's orders because I had no other choice. That was why I wasn't scared. But things were different from before. I had a weapon. I was in a far better position, but my heart was pounding. Humans are so strange. Shit. What am I going to do? What should I do? Kechimaimara. Did I want to fight with Renner? The member said the spray only reaches as far as one meter. One meter? It was basically a hand-to-hand -hand battle. That meant I only had one opportunity. Didn't have a second chance. The member also said I need to aim for a face. That wasn't going to be easy. Shit. Besides, Renner was cautious. How could I stand directly in front of her within one meter? But that's what I'd have to do if uh, I was to have any chance of winning. Renna would do anything to reach her goal. She wouldn't even hesitate to kill. Just like how I didn't. Of course, things were already extremely serious. An apology definitely wouldn't be enough. But at least there hadn't been any casualties. The more time passed, the more irritated Renna would get. 
she might demand someone again and she might kill someone, that's time to show how serious she was. Bad things had already taken place, but a tragedy hadn't occurred yet. But it was almost here. It wasn't very far at all. When I closed my eyes, I could easily picture Rena killing one classmate after another. It's like, I get, I get what, what you're doing there, Keiichi. It's like reflecting on all these potential outcomes. But you really should just get back in the classroom before Rena gets up more irate at you. After I killed Rena and Mion, my room was covered in blood. If she killed 20 people, the classroom would be a pool of it. If that happened, Rena would. She still wouldn't realize she was being delusional. She would rip out her own throat and die. There would be too big a cross for her to carry. And one day she would remember and be saddened. How would she remember if she were dead? But then again, the fact that Keiichi can remember an incident from a previous arc kind of seems to indicate he's got some level of awareness of a previous life, in a sense, you know? So maybe that's what he's getting at. She didn't need to go through that. I didn't want Ren to go through what I had to go through. Shit, I felt dizzy. It was a very long hallway. I didn't know the classroom was so far. With each step I took, my determination to fight Rena became stronger. Rena would be shocked to realize I betrayed her. But if she couldn't wake up from the nightmare on her own, someone else would have to wake her up. And her friends needed to be the ones to do that. Welcome back, Katie Kun. Did I wish you didn't say anything? Uh, what is this smell? As soon as I stepped in the classroom, I smelled something. Everyone had moved to one corner of the classroom. The smell reminded me of a gas station. Was it gasoline? I saw a red gasoline container by Renner's feet. The cap was open. It was seemingly sturdy and made of metal. It said gasoline on a slide written in felt marker. She must have spread it across the entire classroom. The smell was almost giving me a headache. No, it wasn't just in the classroom. The classmates were soaked in gasoline too. How could she? I see. This was just like a hijacker holding a bomb. If the police were to rush in, she would burn the hostages. I didn't know where she got it, but she had a lighter in her left hand. R Rena, what do you think you're doing? Of course I won't actually do it. This is just insurance. I don't want to barbecue everyone here. Everyone either. So I hope this will all just end as a joke. A really, really twisted joke. Type of joke that is just like, people be like, No, you took that way too far, man. It's like, oh, oh, you took your entire classroom hostage, doused them all in gasoline, and then at the end of the day, you were just like, it's just a prank, bro. No, I ain't gonna cut it. You're under arrest. Rena showed off the lighter. Obviously, she was trying to threaten me. So much like uh, Keiichi's uh, spray that he was handed is a last resort. Her last resort would be to pretty much burn the whole place down with them all in it. I've heard about people committing suicide by setting themselves on fire. They pour gasoline on themselves and light it ablaze. You might think that if it was extinguished right away it wouldn't be that bad. But human skin is supposedly very delicate and they say that even if 30% of a person's skin gets burnt it's enough to be fatal. If it was your entire body it would result in death for sure. Just doesn't sound like a pleasant way to go, does it? Now, also here, when it comes to like fires and shit like that, like most deaths caused by shit like that is usually from smoke, really. Like, you take in too much smoke and it like proves to be fatal. But it's not really the flames that usually end up killing people. Although, you know, if if they were like on fire and couldn't actually put it out. They probably would die. Yeah, well, obviously, if you couldn't put it out in time. I had been put in a disadvantageous position. My weapon might take Renner's sight, but I couldn't stop her from using the lighter. She'd probably use it the moment she's attacked. I didn't know if she realized it, but the kind of lighter she had would keep burning until the lid was closed. 
Therefore, all she'd have to do was to light it and drop it onto the floor. In other words, my spray can wouldn't make her any powerless at all. That's the resort I wish the sand gave me had already lost all its power. It's true, really, because if she saw the attack coming, she could, like, like, light it. She probably wouldn't have time to actually react to it, but as soon as the spray hits her face, she would drop it. Regardless, really. So really, he'd have to get that out of her hands before doing that, if it were to come to that.